something that I came to realize last night. I got I got the honor of sitting down with the Burton family for dinner. I've never sat down with dinner with them. And it's something that I've realized, I came to a realization, I love our speaker, Miss D. Um, and the thing that I've realized is that a word that comes to mind when I think of her is genuine. The lady that you get here, the lady that you get at church is the same when she's around her family. And it is, it's a beautiful thing to see. She's gentle. I've been categorized, which was an honor. <laughs> That's <not> right. <her. laughs> I've been categorized by Dr. King in the same category as her, which is an honor to me. He says, when you started hanging out with me and the Burtons, you laugh and you're, you're just yes. giggling all the time. Yes. And I said, That's because that's who I've been around D long enough that it's contagious. She's got that joy of the Lord. Thank you, Matthew. The honor is mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. And Lord, I pray today that you settle it in us. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would speak by your spirit in and through me and in spite of me today, Lord. Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Lord, I thank you that they have ears to hear, a mind to comprehend, a heart to receive what the Spirit of the Lord would say. And Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you'll turn with me in your Bible this morning to Hebrews. I want to talk to you a moment, or the Lord wants to talk to you a moment, actually, I'm just the vessel, um, about faith, living by faith, and faith, what is it? What is it? Um, have you ever asked yourself that question? Um, I, I've grown up in the church, and, you know, we went through a season in the church where everybody was, you know, it was... Well, it's because of a lack of faith. You've got to have more faith. And, and everybody was not really sure what faith was and how you get more of it. <laughs> right? And then we get into the scripture and it says, you, you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Right? By faith. Um, so in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, if you know your word, it, it's called the faith chapter. It says, now faith is the reality or the substance of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. Mm -hmm. So now it means at present, right? Here and now. Now faith, so faith is always present, right? Faith is here and now. Faith is here and present. Faith is present now. Well, if it's present, that's good. Yes. So what's present? Say it a little louder. Faith. Jesus. Yes. Now faith is the reality or the substance. So these means denoting one or more people or things already mentioned or assumed to be common knowledge. Right? It means you should already know it. It's common knowledge, right? If I say, hey, Hannah, go to the house. She knows exactly what house to go to, right? She's not going to question it's just common knowledge between us when I tell her, go to the house. She knows exactly the address and the house to go to. Right? Amen. If I was to say, Hannah, take my purse to the car. She's not going to question which car out here to take it to. Amen. Right? She knows exactly what car I want my purse in.
substance, that which stands under, right? It means reality. Reality is the state of things as they actually exist. The actuality, the truth, right? So faith is literally coming under the authority of the word, which is Jesus. Jesus, is, Pastor preaches this all the time, Jesus is the door, the entry point. And then the word over and over says, through faith, through stepping through the door of Jesus, now you have access to everything that you need. Amen. Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for. Well, hope is a past tense. Thing, right? So what you need, and some of you are begging God for because you don't know who you are, you already actually have. Amen. And this is why we go over and over and over the identity in Christ. Who I am in Him under His authority. Psalms 91. He who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. If you're under his authority, you're under the umbrella of grace, which is Jesus. You're under the word, which is Jesus. You're in Christ, and Christ is in you. You have, by the Holy Spirit, everything you need for life and godliness. You have faith. Every man has been given the measure of faith. Well, what do you need? See, I need a little bit different faith for a headache than I do a cancer. Amen. Right. Amen. I need a little bit more substance, <laughs> right? Not because the Lord sees it any different. It's because you view it different. Amen. The same measure of faith that, that you have is what you need in that moment. It's given to you. When you are a Christian, I'm, I'm assuming I'm talking to saved people. If you're not saved, then you're not in the door. Then this does not apply to you. You have faith in the world and, and its system and all that. You still have it. You just have it over there. <laughs> now I'm talking about kingdom faith, right? In the light. It's in Jesus. Amen. And so where, where your expectation is, that's where your hope is. So you have to ask yourself the question, what am I expecting? Some of you aren't expecting anything. Which is dangerous. Why? Because you don't trust the Lord with all your heart. You lean, you lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, you're not acknowledging Him so that He can direct your path. Why? Because you've been in the world system and whatever you've trusted has failed you. Because it's a fallen system. Right? But Jesus is the trustworthy one. He's the victorious one. Right? And so you can put your faith in him because he is the faithful one. The gift of faith came from him. Right? Amen. Just like the gift of the Holy Spirit. For by it, our ancestors won God's approval. By what? By faith. <clears throat> by faith. You want God's approval? Put your faith in Him. See, believers are actually supposed to believe. <laughs> right? By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. See, you, you believe you're here on the earth. How'd you get here? 
You were created. Go back to Genesis. You were formed from a substance, dirt and water, called clay, mud. And then Jesus breathed into you and you became a living being. So it is sure because of Yahweh my God. What is sure? What he says? What my faith is in in him? It's a sure thing. See, a lot of you are not used to things that are sure. Right? It's a confident expectation. God is the basis of the hope of which of who He is. So when you put your faith in Him, you're saying, I actually believe that you are who you say you are and you can do what you say you can do. Amen. That's what faith is. So when I read the Word, I, it is giving me a glimpse of what is possible. See, if you read the Word and you get into some of the stories like the woman with the issue of blood. She suffered for 12 years. But she said within herself, what is she doing? See, she has the capacity, you have the spiritual capacity the Lord will enlarge your territory the more you believe. That's why if you'll just start laying hands on the sick, <coughs> you're stepping out by faith, believing that Jesus said you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You actually begin to believe that it happened while well, something starts happening. And then you're like, wow, this really does work. It's kind of fun. <laughs> right? But if you believe it, if you say it within yourself, See, you, you are saying something within yourself. You have faith in something, right? You are believing something. So the Lord is asking you to shift over into actually believing the truth because a lot of you believe lies. Hope. Expectation, which comes from a root word which means to bind or to wait for or upon. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. That's the truth. That's the reality. The proof. Evidence to establish the truth. Evidence is confirmation, verification, or final proof. A statement of proof that something is true. To support with evidence or authority, it's a confirming proof. So in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, of what is not seen. Which means without visible proof. It's not that you don't have proof. You have proof. Right here. But if it's not visible to you in your circumstance. Then you get out of what we call faith. For by it, by faith, our ancestors won a God's approval. How many of you want approval? Approval is an act of approving formally or officially. It's a favorable judgment to deliver, to trust, to transfer. Prove the, the evidence that compels acceptance by the mind it's the truth 
So then you, you get into the word and it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Not having heard. The woman with Israel, but she said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of this garment, I know I will be made whole. Amen. See, that's what Jesus paid for, whole. Total well-being. Spirit is what you are. Soul, mind, will, and emotions walk around in a tent, a human body. The washing of the water of the word washes out the stinking thinking, the lies, Hallelujah. right? And you get the word in you, in your mind, and in your heart. You can't just have it here. You've got to get it here by the spirit. The experience, the testimony, the witness. See, when I've experienced him as provider, then I know that's who he is, and you can't tell me he's not. When I experience him as healer, I know that's who he is, and you can't tell me that he's not that. So there has to be a personal relationship and experience where you know him in all the many ways that he is. That's why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So you're going to appeal forcibly to the mind. You have to convince your mind that what your spirit man knows is true. Mm -hmm. the we call it the renewing of the mind. Right? So you have the power to compel or to constrain, to force, to limit. That's why the Bible says take every thought captive and make it obey Christ. Mm -hmm. The word. So you have the power to do it. And nobody else can do it but you. I can't reach into your mind and pull out all the stuff and put in the right stuff. Right? You have to take every thought captive. You have to make it obey Christ. To force, to limit, to cause, to do. Make it. If they're going to force you to go to jail, <laughs> it's going to be kind of uh, serious. Like they're going to come in in their authority and they're going to make you whatever it takes to make you go into the car and then go into the jail cell. And it really doesn't matter how big of a fit you throw or what you try to do you're going. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. You know how to be forceful out there. But see, here we don't wrestle flesh and blood. Have you ever watched two kids wrestle? They're all over each other. And they're sweating. And they got each other in headlocks. And they're waiting, they're trying to get that leg up so they the referee can do the count and they can hear the high wind. That's exactly what's happening. But it's not flesh and blood. And the reason he tells you it's not that, it's because you think that's what it is. <coughs> so he has to tell you. You're not wrestling flesh and blood. That's what you think. But let me tell you what's really happening. 
your wrestling principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. But you can't do it here. You got to come up here and take your seat of authority far above. See, I have dual citizenship. I am a spirit. I have a citizenship in heaven, a legal right to be there because I'm a spirit being and I have the Holy Spirit within me, the very spirit of God. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places far above. Why? Because I'm in him. How do I know that? By faith. I believe the truth. And he's in me. How do I know that? By faith. And I believe the truth. And then I have also some experience to verify that that's true. You can't talk me out of that. Amen. Why? Because I've already seen the sick healed. I've already seen the demons flee. I've already seen the lame walk. I've already seen the blind see. I've already seen all that. I've already seen the provision make a way where there seems to be no way. I've already seen streams in the desert. I've already seen all that. So you can't talk me out of my experience with him. That's why we want you to have an encounter with him, a personal experience with him. In every aspect of who he is. So faith comes or by hearing and hearing through or by the word of God. Faith in his birth in a heart that responds, which means there's an obedient action to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. I welcome or I obey, which means I believe the word. Don't tell me you believe it if you're not going to actually do it. So you have to give birth to the word. The word is anointed. It's the anointed one speaking to me. See, it's alive. This is God speaking to me. So you, he is speaking. You can hear him if you're in the word. Amen. So faith by and through getting the word in me, in my heart, my innermost being. See, it's got to go from here to here. Mm -hmm. I birth the word as I obey the word. Then the word comes forth. What's in me will come out of me. So if he's in you, he's got to come out of you. Amen. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is disobedience. The Holy Spirit empowers you to obey the word. You have the full ability to obey because you already are obeying something. You either obey the flesh or you obey the word. How do I know this? Let's look at Matthew chapter 8. Let's start in verse 5. This is the centurion's faith. He said, When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed in terrible agony. He said to him, am I to come and heal him? <laughs> See, he's going to the Lord on behalf of his brother, and the Lord's asking him, am I to come and heal him? So the Lord's asking him the question. Basically, where's your faith at? Lord, the centurion replied, I am not worthy to have you come in under my roof, but just say the word. See, some of you just need to say the word back to the word. That's where you get results. He watches over his word to perform it. If you want the Lord to do something, 
Talk him back to him. Lord, the centurion replied, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. Full assurance. I am fully persuaded that he is able. For I too am a man under authority. He's saying, Lord, I recognize you're under authority of the Father. Guess what? I'm under authority too. For I too am a man under authority. Having soldiers under my command, I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. He says, I know how this kingdom operates. I know exactly how it operates. It operates by authority. If the believer that actually believes could ever understand their authority, it'd be amazing. Amen. Hearing this, Jesus was amazed and said to those following him, See, they're following him. He never said this about the disciples that walked so close with him. He's saying this about the man that understands how the kingdom operates, that understands authority. He says, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. How did he have so great a faith that he amazed Jesus the word? He understood the kingdom and how authority operated. He said, basically, if you'll speak, it'll be done. Isn't that what we just say? If you speak to the mountain. See, the problem is, is you don't know what a mountain looks like up here in heaven. If you ever watch Louis Giglio's Indescribable, the earth is teeny tiny. So a mountain up there is a grain of sand. It's not a big deal. See, you think everything's a big deal. <laughs> the Lord's funny with me. Me and him were talking about raising the dead. And I was like, my God. He's like, Dee, do you think it's really hard to go wake up the girls for school and say, get up. It's time to go to school. Amen. And I'm like, oh well, no. He goes, what do they do? They get up. He goes, exactly. Mm. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> it's exactly how you do it. Why? Because all of heaven, in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, backs me. It's not me anyway. It's him. So you just have to inquire of the Father. See, Jesus taught us this. You just have to inquire of the Father and say, what do you say? If that's what you want, that's what I'll say. That's what it'll be. Amaze Jesus this week. I dare you. I tell you that many will come from east and west to share the banquet with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus told the centurion, Go, as you have believed, let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that very moment. See, he already said he will be healed. And Jesus said, as you have believed the word, Jesus is the word. That's just his earthly name on the earth. He is for in the beginning was the word, John 1, 1. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word is who he is. Jesus is just his earthly name. 
So as you have believed, let it be done for you. How many of you want some things done? And his servant was healed that very moment. Have faith in God. All things are possible to them that believe. See, nothing's difficult for the Lord. With God, all things are possible. Behold, all things become new. He's not a fixer-upper. He's a, let's make it new. A new creation in Christ. Right? If you believe that you really are who God says you are, if you can see what I see, and you would rise faith to faith and glory to glory, you really are who He says you are. You really can do what He says you can do. He's limitless. You're the one that has set limits. So take the limits off. He really is who he says he is. He really does what he says he can do. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things. All means all, Greek, Hebrew, whatever language you want to say there. All things. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Nothing's difficult for you. So, Lord, forgive us for speaking contrary to your word. Lord, expose the enemy in all his lives. Where we believe Lord, it's out of your character. In the word, when they said, increase our faith, it was because they were going to have to act like you, walk like you, and talk like you. It was because they were going to have to forgive over and over and over. They were going to have to love by choosing it, not by feelings. They were literally going to have to represent you well and and flow in the fruits of the Spirit. Crucify the flesh daily and walk by the Spirit. That's where they said increase our faith. So Lord, we choose to believe you. We're going to just come like little children and take you at your word. We're going to believe you. We're going to trust you, Lord, with all of our hearts. Not leaning on our own understanding, but just in all of our ways, acknowledge you, your word, what you say, and being completely obedient to that. We repent of partial obe obedience, which is still disobedience, Father. It's still being out of faith. Help us to be quick to obey you, Holy Spirit. Quick to obey you. Lord, you said, the ones that obey, that's where the great faith is. And we thank you for it. We submit to your word, which is your will, which is your way. We don't have to doubt or question what you want, because you want on the earth as it is in heaven. You want us to take our authority. You want us to bind and to loose. You want us to set at liberty those that are captive by your name and your blood. To lay hands on the sick and see them recover. 
Lord, you want none to perish, but all to come to repentance, which is a changing of the mind. So, Lord, let us dive deeper into your word. You said those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Being right with you, right standing with you. We agree with your word today. We, we do a divine Holy Spirit alignment to align with your word. We come out of agreement with the enemy and his plans and purposes and his lies. We come into agreement with truth because you said when the sun sets free is free indeed. And we give you all the praise. Lord, let signs and wonders and miracles follow us because we do believe. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.